Hello and welcome to Let's Play Disco Elysium Part 22. We have a very important witness to interview. Let's get to it. Uh, that's welcome to the roof. <laughs> the young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body built long and lean. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. <laughs> Is there a cleaning lady? I think I need one. Oh yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell is opened in there. <laughs> Disco infernum. They also say that's why the cleaning lady quit. Because of the infernum. Oh. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. I'm a detective from Precinct 57. I see you've already met my colleague. Have I ever? <laughs> Have you grown accustomed to your role as a police officer? Oh yeah, feel the power. <laughs> Once a cop, always a cop. Like riding a copo cycle. She takes a sip of her coffee. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Ah, uh, I see. She takes a pensive drag on her menthol cigarette. Be careful. Ask something else first. When you go there, use words like, I hear you've been through something difficult. Hmm. What is this wildflower? Show her the flower. She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp like a mini dagger. The petal crumples on contact. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? <laughs> Sambo style. Why was it there? Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer. Maybe because of the wind? Or an admirer? Hmm. Any admirers, miss? Admirers? I'm too old to be a debutante. She looks over the railing at the plaza below. And this place is no fashionable society. Question avoided. Let's conclude that she has admirers. Plenty of them. I noticed your room is close to mine. I have a personal question. Yes, you're just one room away. She pours herself more coffee. Very personal. Good, yes. This means she could have heard something like what you were doing before you blacked out. Mm -hmm. Were you in Sunday night? I need to know what I did before I lost my memory. <laughs> you do not need to know that. The lieutenant taps on his notebook. What you need is to ask normal police questions, like he waits for you to finish the sentence. Get a grip, he thinks. At least do your personal stuff when I'm not here. Hmm. What is your name, miss? For the record. Classia Amandu. Cla <laughs> I wish I could work out how to actually pronounce that name. <laughs> Same name that Titus gave you. It sounds Orangis or as does her accent. Her birthmarks also signal Orangia. You don't know why, but Orangess girls tend to come speckled with them. Uh, are you from Oranger? Right, sir. 
Vredfort, Republic of Orangia. I guess you could say I'm a, an Orangia's expatriate. <laughs> what is Orangia? A bad memory officer. The Republic of Orangia is a de democratic nation on the Mundi Isola, north of here, over the sea and across the Pale. It is one of six major occidental nations to stake hold to continued occupation of Revacol, the coalition. People consider it a reasonable superpower. Mm, reasonable? They will make you into a fiscal colony, divert your natural resources, hold patents and shares, but they won't threaten to wipe you out at any time like Revacol did in its prime. Bad memory of what? Of lilacs and lightning. She squints her eyes as if to see them in the distance. Sparks, glass, joraluminum. <laughs> Vredo Fort is a conference city. It's always autumn there and night. At least it was for me. What's so bad about that? says Kim. Nothing, if you're no longer there. Hmm. Uh, how old are you? I'm 28. She takes a drag. And what do you do, miss? What is your specialisation? Something stupid. Want to hear what's stupid? Somewhere in a room apartment on Boogie Street, a young man shows patrol officer Tilbrook his genital warts, asking if they're cancer. His partner, Emil Mullins, can't be there. He's in another apartment with another man who's showing him a dead dog under the radiator. It's dead, Mullins says. No, the man replies. I touched it. He's warm. He's warm, Mullins replies, because he's under the radiator. You're a cop? N no. More stupid. Orange slit. Uh, Orange's lit. Literature. It's what I studied at the university. She raises both eyebrows. Mm, what's this Orange's literature about? Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Orange. All national literatures are, only the name of the nation changes. If that's true, then Revacolian lit would fit you like a glove. Okay, so this Aronje's lit. What do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. How do you make money then? Money is very important. Show us some money. <laughs> cool. She looks at the black note in your hand. I've made more money by just being than I have with Aronje's lit. Being what? Many things, a roller skating instructor, a secretary, Miss Orange 37, she smiles. It's the world most, world's most tired smile. Could we take a look at your passport, please? I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why is that, says Kim? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Thank you for your candle. Why? They say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. Mm. Okay then. But yeah, I guess so. How do I know you've told us your real name? If I want to lie to you? I would come up with a more mainstream name than Klaasje Amandu. It's a weird name. She seems to be telling the truth, sire. Okay then. Conclude. Okie dokie. She pours herself more coffee. Thank you. That's it. For the record. The record? So official! Uh, nice room you've got here. Yeah, it's pretty deluxe. No one likes to talk about their dirty laundry and their empty bottles. Maybe if you phrase it emotionally. Hmm. Ooh. 
hate to say it, but you've got sad all over the place. Yeah, she draws out the vowel. I've contaminated it pretty bad. Is that why you're out here? She nods. The contamination spreads from room to room. First I escaped upstairs. The sad got that too. Then I found the handle from the summer door. What exactly is the nature of this contamination? For me it's a mix of me with a lack of cleaning services. How about you? Talk about the establishment is you talk around the establishment is you have an industrial sad spill in there. She taps the roof with her heel. For me it's alcohol or there's a miss. Cool. I think I'm developing a pinch of that too. It hasn't done wonders to my taste in interior decoration. What are you doing here in the whirling in rags? I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? says Kim. She calculates. About four months. I came in November. And why here? Here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Revacol? Um. Hmm. Here in Martinez. I heard this is where washed up disco has beens go. You're too young to call yourself a disco has been. She smirks. I'm really not. Mm, that window is new. It is. She moves slightly to your left to check her reflection in it. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. He finds the answer unsatisfying. Mm, okay, you've got quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. Thank you, I've put a lot of time and effort into it, she says, without any discernible irony. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Rivercall, but you should still reprimand her. <laughs> no, no, don't listen to the stiff. Be cool. Okay, it was quite impressive. How did you amass such a hoard? With money, sir, she takes a drag. It's not exactly the anti-star-sized caboodle I intend for it to be one day, but it's getting there. The anti-star, or what, is or was a vespertine rock and roll star who liked to do drugs. He did so many drugs he eventually mutated into a corpse. <clears throat> You seem to have, amongst other things, preptide. Oh yes, one of my favourites. It cures many ailments. Like what? Like not being able to stay up 36 hours, she thinks. Not being happy, it cures those ailments. It's just mirrored speed molecule, basically. The collection includes Sinacra, an opioid antagonist comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, miss? Kim's tone isn't aggressive, just inquisitive. Better safe than sorry. She takes a drag and smiles. That's all as far as that goes, then. Very funky, she takes a drag, looking you straight in the eye. I have other questions for you. Okay. She takes a pensive drag on her cigarette. Hmm, okay. They tell us you've been through something difficult. Something difficult? She raises her eyebrows. I've been through at least half a dozen difficult things. Which one do you mean? You were sexually assaulted, miss? By sexually assaulted you mean raped? She takes a quick drag, unperturbed. Yes, says Kim. It's a bit early in the morning for rape, isn't it? She sounds positively buoyant, vivacious, totally unbothered. Hmm. What? It's not that early. 
She looks around. The sun has risen over the sea. People are rushing to work below. It is. It's murderously early. I'm amazed I'm awake. Why am I even awake? Hmm. So you... So were you? Yeah. She draws out the word. I'm going to go with not raped. I don't want to say that shit about him. By him, she must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. I've... They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more. She searches for her words and shrugs. Rapable. Ooh. By they, she means the hardy boys. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery, sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. <laughs> hmm. Titus asked you to spice things up for us. Pretty much, she cradles her coffee cup in both hands, warming them. How do the Hardy Boys know you? They're frequent guests downstairs. She looks at the floor. It's tarred. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. And how did you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. There must be more to it. You should return to the top this topic after you've talked about her relationship with the deceased, maybe? Hmm. Can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? I'm sorry, I can't do that. She puffs on a cigarette. Not right now. Maybe later. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his, I don't know, hair. Another puff. More nervous. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later, says Kim. <sighs> what did happen between you and the victim? We partied. What kind of partying? Point to your bloated face, the kind I do? With all due respect, sir, I think we parted a little harder than that. <laughs> harder than this? Keep pointing at your face. I didn't know it was physically possible. Oh, it is. She takes a long drag. You're still alive. What did you do when you partied, says Kim? We drank, sir. She takes a sip of her coffee. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulant. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough and we did enough of them. How did you two meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet, calm. Downstairs. She taps on the roof with her ten centimetre heel. At the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. A military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. She appears aloof. But that scar part, the scary, is stressed and drawn out. What's that about? Apprehension? With longing, she misses him. When was this? A month ago? Something like that? Are you sure you weren't raped? I'm 89% sure. Hmm... So you're not entirely sure? You know how it is. 
Do you? Mm, actually, I don't. Hmm. She flicks a bit of ash away. Maybe you don't. The ash lands on his jumps on her jumpsuit. She brushes it off. There are numerous cigarette burns on those silvery scales. Easy to see how now that you're closer. In conclusion, officer, I'm not going to go with a mild to medium. I'm going to go with a mild to medium not raped here. Mm. It sounds like something happened and you don't want to acknowledge it. Let me make this 100% clear then, officer. I was not sexually assaulted. She tips, tilts her head. Would I be as flippant if I had been? Hmm. What did they hang him for, if not rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing, she thinks. But you probably know all about it. And his role in this strike was what? I think he was a security detail. He was ex-military, worked for Wild Pines and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean, but I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. Mm. Why was there a bullet in his head? Bullet? There's a silence. Her brows meet in the middle for a pained frown. They shot him too? I'm not picking up any theatre craft here, so the pause is sincere. They stripped his clothes and they shot him. You mean after they hanged him? I'm, I'm confused. Sorry. So am I. Were you aware that he had also been shot, miss? Things are starting to go a little over my head here. I thought he was hanged. I was not present when they did it. I didn't know what happened. I just know what they told me and Sylvie, the bartender. This is beginning to get confusing for you too. And we don't like that. Where was she last Sunday night? Where were you when this happened? Cowering? I was cowering downstairs with Sylvie. Oh, it must be hard for you, seeing him there. Oh yes, she says bitterly. I've had a great view from the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. You called us, the RCM. Yes, jackpot. The call reporting the hanging, that was you? I made it, she nods, and I would appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone. In Martinez they call it snitching. Reporting crime is confidential in Revacol, miss. Ooh. The caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it, I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a bit. Nicked it? How? With nail clippers, and I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. So she's Gartier's mystery phone cutter. And in the process she broke the landline downstairs. Did I? She looks into a coffee. Fuck, I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. Hmm, jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir, but if I hadn't, he'd still be hanging there. Mm. Again, how do you know the... Hardy boys, and how did, or rather, how do the Hardy boys know you? Like I said, we met over drinks. Did you party? A little, yeah. 
Like you parted with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but you have but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy boys? I have. Which one? Which one, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously, but as I said, it's been a long winter. Could that have been part of the reason they hanged him? Mm, could that be why they lynched him? Jealousy? I hope not. A pause. Actually, I know that's not the reason. I'm careful about that kind of thing. Not crossing the wires, you know? But that's probably where they got the rape idea. What do you mean? Men like that? I don't know. Another pause. It's the way their imaginations work. I, I suspect it's what they'd like to do to me. Thank you for telling us all of this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. We should head back downstairs, officer. The lieutenant looks at you. We may have things to discuss there. I had something else before we go. A little thing. Hmm. She nods, silvery cigarette plumes disappearing into her mouth. Hmm. So this is a white check. Let's have a go. Look her in the eye. Ah. She looks back, time moves slowly, the triangles of her face rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry, we'll, we'll protect you from her beauty. We will consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. We will see through deceits. You are shielded, you are wise. You are advised there are muscles on, on long white bones that line her limbs, just below the silver jumpsuit. What is happening? Nothing, just time passing. Don't worry about it. You are not a fool. Anything out of the ordinary and you would be notified. Air moves in your windpipe. Your heart beats. You're a detective. Get back to detecting. Am I being beguiled? She presses her elbows against her waist and slowly turns her head. Her hair brushes her shoulders, making a small hissing sound, almost imperceptible. Avert your gaze. The strange moment ends. It was brief, no longer than 2.2 seconds. Let's return to this later, miss. Why not? I'll be here until 11pm drinking coffee, most likely. Okie doke. Well, many a surprising thing. Hmm. This is a small heavy door. There is no lock in sight. Where does this lead to? I don't know. He makes a note in his notebook. It's not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Do you think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and he nods towards the young woman. A number of people connected to this case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. Let's push it. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy too. Very sturdy. Mmm, dear. Hmm. We're unlikely to get it open, but let's give it a go. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. You kick it, gung-ho style, entering the premises style, but the door fails to respect the force. All you hear is the bar rattling inside, laughing at you. Ooh. All right, the woman nods approvingly. Let's trash the place. 
let's not, says Kim. Let's leave. We stubbed our toe and it nearly killed us. We need to chat to Kim in a more private setting. How about we go to the balcony? Is that private? It's private-ish. We seem to like having chats on the balcony. I kind of feel like a bit of romance is brewing. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let's head on down the stairs. <laughs> this is probably private enough. Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. You think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will res disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just stripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not c corroborate their story is definitely not part of the plan. Why did she tell us that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. I'm not sure she had to lie. I wouldn't have known. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. She seems candid. You think so? A shadow runs across his face. Being candid is the best way to lie. The appearance of candor with some facts thrown in, draws attention away from whatever one chooses to omit. She may be trying to control the pace of the investigation. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our inquiries will bring us back here soon enough. Hmm. question is how to progress do we go straight to the hardy boys well I don't recognize these people perhaps we should talk to them they look kind of official themselves a horse-faced woman the woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. Oh. A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Is everything all right? Mm. Okay, hold on, you're a patrol officer of the RCM? Yes, I am. I'm on a murder investigation, are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. I am a cop too. I know. Here's the real deal. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. It's hard to tell whether he's sarcastic or sincere, but if you had to guess, you would say the lieutenant is being sarcastic. Is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, why would I want to talk to you? Oh. <laughs> Have I wronged you? I've done a l that to a lot of people. No, you haven't wronged me. It's okay. She shakes her head and breathes out. Something changes in her. It's pity. Pity comes okay, over her. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Hmm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? <laughs> so what precinct are you from? What precinct? She just sighs. Am I from... God. He doesn't know fucking deranged lunatic the sunglasses wearing man pushes through his teeth what is he over no that's <laughs> where is where is this sunglasses man with the sunglasses 
You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Mm, you're the police, right? Cool. So am I. I don't... She looks around. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Judith. Wait, is he police? Me? No, I'm just a man with sunglasses. I like wearing sunglasses inside. Sunglasses and a fucking wig. Okay. What are you, the police, doing here? I'm just looking out for... You? No one. The man looks at her. I'm just a man with sunglasses and you are... Say nothing. I just want to do my job, that's all. She says quietly and looks away. Okay. Goodbye. So, she's what? Witness protecting this, this guy in the sunglasses? I mean, this one looks like they're in an RCM uniform as well. Um, it doesn't look particularly like the, the guy in the sunglasses, but maybe the idea is that he... You look like shit. Okay. That's, that's, that looks like an RCM uniform, right? Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. The last couple of days have been rough. Oh, don't be so modest. We are looking at several months worth of damage here. Kind of a miracle you're still up and at it, to be honest. Come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. It's not just this week. What do you want? There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head. A similar, but different face. He might be wearing a disguise. Mmm. There's something strange about this guy. Figure it out. We're quite likely to figure it out. <laughs> cool shades. Are you wearing a disguise? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. He looks at you inquisitively. Okay, so let's see if we can work out who he is. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? Forty mm. first? Okay, okay, the man sounds genuinely excited. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds somewhere good. <laughs> Let's just talk more about this hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Oh, the hypothetical 41, yeah. Let's fantasise about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy, you're not busy. Let's just play around. <sighs> Do you have a crime to solve? Oh no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes, and let me tell you, it's quite a privilege to seeing you work. This isn't helping, the woman says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. Who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but the man pauses for dramatic effect. Police officers! Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys, and, get this, and not getting their drink on at two o'clock. Just some regular, boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of a lung. Mm, who is the far-out son of a lung? Oh, it's you. You eccentric genius. He winks at you sarcastically. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? 
Not even a little. It's an urban myth, the lieutenant says quietly, about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. You're not the son of a lung. Ah. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling dished out by this sunglassed man. Okay, yes, you get the joke. Leave it at that. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Partners in crime, or...? No, he exclaims excitedly, because in this thought experiment we are police officers in a police station. We don't do crimes. We're not crime bros. Come on, stop it, she says quietly. Okay, I can't imagine it anymore. Neither can I, partner, neither can I. His grey eyes suddenly flash above the glass, fl glass frames. They feel sad. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Kim, who is this guy? Mm. He shakes his head. I'm not getting involved in this. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in the sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognise them. I have some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't even look like a cop, he inspects you. You know what you look like? Hmm... Like a man down on his luck? I'm trying real hard here, man. Oh, he seems taken aback for a moment. Well, go solve your case then. <laughs> that would count as trying hard. He doesn't answer your question. Now will you answer some questions for me? No, he says calmly. Then just keeps staring at you. Mm. Why not? Because it's not my job. Why don't you go and fucking do yours and solve this damn hanging? <laughs> if you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. He adopts a lighter tone. I want to hear you say things. Hear that? He wants to hear you say things. Say one. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. It turns out he was shot and hanged. You think he was hanged as a cover-up? To hide the shooting? Basically, yes. Okay, well, he cracks his blonde wig. Hmm, his hair. He cracks his hair. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? He gives you an odd look. It's like you felt it would be intellectually stimulating and would lead somewhere. A custom even? Strange. Who knows why we do the things we do? Somehow bouncing these ideas off the man with sunglasses felt calming, like you'd done it before. Oh my god, there's more. He looks at you in disbelief. You want something more. What is it? Mm. Let's talk about the hanged man again. Uh... Well, it doesn't look like we get anything more out of that. See you around. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Wait, your voice. I recognise it. Really? I wonder where? I lost my badge recently. When I called in to report it missing, you were there. That's the where you remember. That's where you remember me from. Uh, I have a bit of point your head, memory trouble. You don't say. He turns away from you. Goodbye then. The voice thing was a coincidence. Run along, asshole. Okay, the man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? Uh... 
I know, super weird. There's something we're missing here, something you can't put your finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. Yeah, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Should we try it? Again. I can't believe this shit. <laughs> He shakes his head, looking like he really is having trouble believing this shit. Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What do you say? Okay? Okay? Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay, I was clearly wrong. He was is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind, not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. <laughs> so, I'm kind of thinking that me and this guy may have been partners at some point in the past. Uh, the disguise thing is totally weird, though. thinking it might be a good idea to talk to these randomers around here and we're supposed to talk to the hardy boys again but I feel like that's a job for next time on Let's Plays Disco Elysium if you haven't already please take the chance to like share and subscribe um, so that you can get more of great content like this. Thank you for watching and farewell. Thank you to my epic patrons who make videos like these possible. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe.